Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me on this Thursday for another daily word of encouragement as we look at the scriptures, as we're studying through the book of Psalms. And uh, that brings us this morning to Psalms chapter number 28. I want to read for you those uh, nine verses that we find here within this chapter. And then I want to answer this question and address this question, which is, does God hear our prayers. And so notice with me, starting in verse number one, down to verse number nine, the Bible reads here, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. As we think about Psalms chapter number 28, we find here the prayer of David. And once again, I want to address this question as we look at this chapter. And that question is, does God hear our prayers? And the answer to that question is yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that God is omniscient. God knows everything, and therefore God is aware of every single prayer that is uttered. Uh, but then also the answer is no in the sense that God does not respond to every single prayer that is offered. Uh, there are certain manners that God gives us within the scripture, certain requirements that we must abide by in order for our prayers to receive uh, a response from the Lord. And you see here this morning, the goal of prayer is not just the activity of prayer, but rather the goal of prayer uh, is to receive the ear of God, that we would pray in such a manner in which God would consider and God would respond to the prayers that we would offer unto him. I think about this quote that Charles Spurgeon gave many years ago. I want to read that for you here this morning. And uh, he said, we must remember that the goal of prayer is the ear of God. Unless that is gained, prayer has utterly failed. The utterings of it may have kindled devotional feeling in our minds. The hearing of it may have comforted and strengthened the hearts of those with whom we have prayed. But if the prayer has not gained the heart of God, it has failed in its essential purpose. And as we think about the prayer of David and specifically the one that we find here in verse or in chapter number 28, we find that David is confident. He is, he is certain that God has heard his prayer. And we find that right in the middle in verse number six, David says, blessed be the Lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. And so David was confident that God had heard the, uh, the prayers, the supplications concerning the deliverance uh, and the blessings that he so desperately desired from the Lord that we find here within this chapter. And so I want us to study chapter number 28. I want to highlight just a few verses that we find here uh, within this psalm, uh, which, which gives us some principles concerning the type of prayer that God is inclined to hear, that God is inclined to respond to uh, according to the scriptures. And so first of all, I want you to notice with me uh, in David's prayer here, it is a passionate prayer. And notice verse number one, the Bible says, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. And David was basically saying here in verse number one, Lord, uh, you must hear my prayer. If not, I die. Uh, and we find here really the heart and, and the passion of David. He says, I cry unto the Lord my rock. 
And I think about the prayer of, of John Knox. John Knox was a prayer warrior, a wonderful preacher uh, for the Lord. And the Queen of Scotland said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of England. And John Knox's prayer that he prayed before the Lord every single day was, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Uh, he was passionate about that. He was fervent about that within his heart. He said, Lord, give me the conversion uh, concerning the souls of those in Scotland or I die. That is my desire and that is my passion. And the Bible says in James chapter 5, uh, verse number 16, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so we find here, first of all, in the confidence of David that God had heard his prayer, we find that his prayer was a passionate prayer. But then I want you to notice with me as we continue in verse number two, I find here that it was also a persistent prayer. And notice what the Bible says here. It says, hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee. And so we find there the plural supplications. It wasn't just a one-time prayer, but it was a prayer that he brought before the Lord over and over. And then also in the context of chapter number 28, we find here that this was a prayer that David consistently brought before the Lord. And we find throughout the scriptures that persistent prayer is pleasing to the Lord because our persistence and perseverance proves our faith in the Lord. And I think about Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number six, it teaches us that without faith, uh, there's no way that we can please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And uh, I also think about the story that Jesus gives in Luke chapter number 18 concerning the widow and the secular judge. And the widow is in a bind and, and uh, she comes to this judge that has no fear of God and she seeks this judge that he would avenge her concerning her adversaries. And we find within that story that the judge has no care in the world concerning this widow, wants nothing to do with, uh, with her case and her situation. Nevertheless, because this widow continually beseeches this judge, he says later within that passage, he says, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord Jesus Christ uses that story as an example. And he says, uh, when I come, will I find faith on this earth? Uh, will there be people like this widow who will continually uh, petition me concerning their request at the throne of grace? And we find throughout the Bible that God is pleased with our persistence when it comes to our prayer, for it proves our faith and belief that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so we find here a passionate prayer, a persistent prayer. I also find it's a pious prayer, for at the latter portion of verse number two, it says, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. And as we think about that, uh, that action of lifting up one's hands when, uh, when one prays, that is symbolic of lifting up holy hands. Uh, it's symbolic of having a clean and a pure life. And we find throughout the Bible that God desires that we would have a pure life. If we regard iniquity in our hearts, then he will not hear us. Uh, he's not going to respond to our prayers if we have secret sins or presumptuous sins within our personal lives. And therefore, we must have a holy life. We must have a pious lifestyle if we desire to gain an audience uh, with the Lord concerning our prayers. I think about what E.M. Bounds wrote in his book. He says, prayer does not stand alone. It is not an isolated performance. Prayer stands in closest connection with all the duties of an ardent piety. And E.M. Bounds was saying there within that book uh, that a lifestyle of purity and holiness lies in closest connection with a prayer that will prevail, uh, with a prayer that will gain an audience before the Lord. 
And so we find here in the prayer of David, it was a passionate prayer. It was a persistent prayer. It was a pious prayer. Notice with me, it was also a persuaded prayer. In verse number seven now, he writes, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. He was persuaded concerning the help of God. Uh, he was persuaded that God had heard his prayer and that God would have his perfect way in his life concerning his situation and God would deliver him according to his wisdom and his will. And that brings us to the final point here, the latter portion of verse number seven. And we find that this type of prayer becomes a powerful prayer. And notice what David writes here at the end of verse seven. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. And you see, when true praying is done and we are confident that God has heard us, then there is great peace and there is great joy in our hearts given to us through prayer by the Lord. And so we find here that David had the right type of prayer. Uh, he had the right type of lifestyle. And therefore, he was confident that God had heard his prayer, that God would respond to his prayers. And we find here at the end, that became a powerful prayer in that it changed his heart. It changed him from the inside out. He was filled with joy. He was filled with uh, rejoicing and praises towards his God, because he knew that the Almighty God, the perfect, good, and loving God, had heard his prayer, and he will, in his perfect timing, respond to his prayer. And so, let me encourage each and every one of us here this morning that we, too, would have a proper type of prayer in lifting up our requests before the Lord. Does God hear all prayers? Yes, he does, and that he is omniscient. He's aware of it all. But does God respond to all prayers? No. We find in the scriptures that there are certain requirements. Uh, there's, there's a certain, uh, certain type of prayer that God is willing to respond to. And here we find few of those characteristics concerning the type of prayer that brings a response from the Lord. It is a passionate prayer, a persistent prayer, a pious prayer, a persuaded prayer. And that prayer becomes a powerful prayer, a prevailing prayer before the Lord. And so let me encourage you here this morning that you would continue in your prayer before the Lord and that you would realign your prayer, that it would be the right type of prayer, that it would line up with the manner of prayer that we find here in Psalms chapter number 28. And so I pray that could be a blessing and an encouragement to you here this morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.